the big calls on all the big races. What a week it's been to be on planet Earth. Glorious, some might say. We're well, of course, into now. Glorious Goodwood Festival. Great British racing all over the place. The sun continues to shine. And we've got a massive Saturday to preview here for you on What a Shout. Great guests coming up. Great panellists brought to you by our sponsors, Bet365. Dave Orton, delighted to be back in the seat. Film somewhere in the capital on a Friday morning. This is the Racing Post flagship weekend feature show. And it's great to have you along. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's what it's all about. Get your comments in below on YouTube. You can do that. We read them as we go along. Robbie Wilders reads them. The anti-postman joins yeah, me Yeah, well, I'll get them read out to me. I, mean, well, I don't, you get I don't to, really... Because you're off Twitter now, aren't you? And all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I just I ain't got time for that, Sticks mate. and stones, if, if pe basically. people are slagging me off, then I, I tend to find out for someone else. But you do, look, if, if you're not sure who Robbie is, Robbie's Get to know. Re relatively new to the tip. I mean, it's, it's January now, you're, you're season six pro, months, aren't you? Six months, I think, yeah, six months yeah, anniversary. Yeah, absolutely. And you do look at things outside the box, don't you? Try, Try and look to, for prices at the start of the week that are going to be shorter. Yeah, enough. although not as much recently because I've been in Mykonos, but. Oh, the, listen, you we've might, all been on tour. Viewers might have noticed my arms are looking quite brown, but. I don't think that, I think that's a British tan, and it's. You I don't know, I, don't, I think you have to go a long way to find browner forearms than that. You mate. were actually in centre parks, weren't you? With, with, <laughs> with Rod and G Rod. And I actually got in the Saddle though, unlike Rodders. Well, it has been a while since you've been on, but this is a great week, isn't it? Yeah, good week. Yeah, good week to come back. Very busy, but uh, enjoyed the action. Um, really enjoyed the uh, Goodwood Cup earlier in the week. The well, was was absolutely stunning. Pat Cooney from our sponsors, Bet365, who has been on a tour like Elton John, basically, <laughs> all over the place. We're thrilled to have you back in. You have been at Goodwood. Yeah, I'm still standing as well. Oh! So, um, yeah, that's the first of the desperate gags as well, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, as Robbie just said, the, the, the Goodwood Cup was a race for the ages, wasn't it? It was just a real thriller. And the, the most interesting thing was when Baid won. I'm thinking, well, here we are. We've waited 10 years for a horse like this mm. since Frankel. This is the best one we've seen, possibly since Frankel. I wonder what sort of reception he'll get as he comes in. And it was just a gentle ripple of applause. And I think the public just haven't really latched on to him. Maybe... It's just because he's raced over a mile. His dad, See the Stars, was a champion at three trips. Mm. Frank was a champion at two trips. Maybe he hasn't got a, a sexy name. You know, we'd, we'd, at least with Batash, we could call him the Batmobile, and we, yeah. you know, and so forth. Well, of, co <laughs> but, of course. But the public just. I, I think that I, is a factor, the name, definitely. Yeah. Um, but the public. I think it's a great name, isn't it? Bye. What does it mean in. Why, who knows? Yeah. Wait, yeah. Le let me Google that. Oh, oh, but people can't go. even spell his name properly, necessarily, yet. yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's the best for the last few years. Did you speak sure. to William about him afterwards? Uh, I spoke to him and I you know, just wished him well. And of course, he's, we've all been waiting for him to go up to 10 furlongs. Yeah. So he's just following the plan that was set back in April when I spoke to him about the horse. But uh, it's the Judmont next over 10 and a half. Mm. Will he take on the likes of the Derby winner, maybe? Well, well it, it doesn't look like a Desert Crown's going to make that, does it? No. But there, there are other very good horses going yeah. for it. Um, so I could certainly see him winning that one as well. And then... Maybe his final race would be Ascot Champions Day, and it might be, well, if it's soft to go for the, the, the shorter trip, if it's fast to stay at 10 and So he could go unbeaten in his career, and, and when he ends it, everyone will be going, I still don't know how good he was. He's got a, it's a bit silly, isn't it? Because we should really be championing these horses. It doesn't matter if they're as good as Frankel. Frankel's like the best ever, yeah. as far as we can say. And, and see the stars, we've been, we've been blessed to be around, haven't we, in their era, mm. OK? And, uh, of course, when I first came into racing, I, everyone used to tell me how good Arkle was. And I was gutted that I didn't see Arkle. Dawn Run, all these great horses, you know. Um, so I feel very, very lucky to be around. I think we'll, uh, we will look back on Baid and feel that we've been lucky to see him. He's unbeaten. I mean, he's got a bit of the winks about him, hasn't he? Because... You know, everyone was comparing her to Frankel. Yeah. You know, but she just beat anything that was put in front of her. It's all you could do in, the, in these generations. I'm almost certain he's better with some give in the ground as well. And I don't think they're letting him rip on these quick ground races. They weren't even going to go to the Sussex at one point. You know, they were going to wait, but they obviously, you know, even before Caribas came out, they were going to try and mop that up as well. He's got the rest of the season in mind. When we spoke to William Agus about this chap at the start of the year, it's a long season ahead. That's right. That's right. It will be very interesting to see... You know, weather permitting. I know he doesn't want to go to the art because he thinks it'll be a bog, but I think with some giving the ground, they will let him rip and we will see a proper performance. What does it yeah, mean? Yeah, I think so, but it's just disappointing that they're talking about retiring him in, in two starts because he only, he only started racing, what, 15 months ago? Mm. You're the voice of Twitter then, even though you're off it. Is that what people are saying? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. Like, you saw Frank all throughout his juvenile career, didn't you? Yeah. What, what does Bayou mean? Uh, I couldn't find anything. I mean, no. initially I got uh, the noise of a sheep, but I think they interpreted that as bard. 
well, that's, that's we're hoping, what the Arabs look, are going again, for. Again, Twitter would say he's been more like a lamb than a lion. Mm. But look, this is by it's been a, we've seen the best horse in the world. Bar none this week. It's been great, isn't it? And we're going to preview some big races for you, of course, coming from Goodwood, including the massive Stewards Cup. We've got a great interviewee for you as well. Shall we crack on, chaps? Shall we? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. All right, here's exactly what we've got coming up. Upper Lambourne trainer, dual Group 1 winning trainer, Ed Walker, comes back onto the show. Really interesting, insightful chat with Ed, not just about his runners this weekend, but much of the racing world. Ed does not shirk away from any topic. Then we'll be giving you five big race previews, uh, finishing off in the last, of course, at, at Goodwood on television on Saturday, before those all-important weekend winners. And this one will get spicy. Well, it pleases me immensely to tell you that Upper Lambourne trainer, dual Group 1 winning trainer, we should say, after this year, Ed Walker joins us back on What A Shout. Ed, good morning. Morning, Dave. How are you? I'm very well. 22 winners up on the board. Now, Ed, I've got to be honest with you. We spoke to you around about the Sprint Cup time last year when your July Cup winner, Starman, was going for the Sprint Cup. We know what happened there. He got nutted on the line, of course. I was a bit worried for you this year, Ed. I was thinking, where is the next Starman coming for uh, uh, thankfully, Dream Loper answered the call in France. Yeah, she did. I was a bit worried, to be honest with you, as well, because we've got a very small crop of three-year-olds. Um, we had a really low intake, our lowest intake for a long time. Um, so I was a bit worried, but we've got a strong team of four-year-olds, and Dream Loper's really stepped up. Um, thankfully, really, because some of the others, great ambassador, um, came from the dark. They've had a few setbacks and, and just are not, you know, carried on the progression they had last year. So... Thank God, thank God she did step up and she, you know, she had a perfect start to the year in the Dahlia and, um, and then the Dispahan was sort of dream come true, really. So, um, not been quite as plain sailing since then, but no, she's been a star and she's back to group one and it's, uh, yeah, great to get that second on the board. Yeah, let's have a talk about the Nassau then uh, this week because it looks... Two furlongs out, she had everything bar the winner, Nashua, stone cold, didn't she? It was a funny run race. You thought it might have been an advantage to be handy and sort of kick off the front, but she didn't quite get home. Yeah, so, we, you know, the step up to nine furlongs obviously proved a real success this year in, in both the, the Dahlia and, and the Dispan. And we didn't really get a true reading of the, her, her ability of a 10 in, in, in Ireland, which was off the ground, which she didn't enjoy. So we were still coming in here, not quite sure. Yeah, I stepping, you know, unsure about stamina. You don't really want to be making the running, but I think Kieran did 100% the right thing. I said to him, just do whatever you've got to do to make her relax. We couldn't see where the pace was going to come from. And, you know, it, he did a great job setting her. I was very, very happy mid-race. Actually, I grew in confidence as the race went on. <laughs> Annoyingly, Andrea just took her on at the top of the hill, probably a third on before Kieran really wanted any pressure. Um, and you know the the nine furlongs, nine furlongs. She was in front still, and 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 that last furlong just saw her come unstuck. And I think it really was just a case. She ran brilliantly and just didn't get home. You know, it's job done now, isn't it, with the Group One under her belt? But you must be thrilled that Baid now looks like he's stepping up to a mile two. Because if she goes back to a stiff mile, you've got to be hopeful of maybe nicking another one, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think so, and I think you know. I think Kieran learned a lot about her yesterday, as did I. But I think in terms of riding her and having the confidence to... we always happy with settling her and, and, and having the confidence to just let her jump and find her rhythm is, is going to be an advantage going forward. So, you know, it, it's annoying, really, that we didn't learn this in Ireland because, you know, we've missed the Falmer, we've missed um, the Rothschild next week, which is obviously too close. So the mile options are... Uh, so we've got the Matron in Ireland, we've got the Sun Chariot, um, and then we'll see whether she stays. I'd love to go to the Breeders' Cup, nine and a half furlongs, and see if she stays. Two turns from there. So that's yeah. the plan. Yeah, love that, Ed. And she's a real, yeah, yeah, you know, sort of public filly because she comes back and she's learning to settle. And we all hope that's the case for you. Pat, it, it's something interesting that Ed said there. He's got, you know, a low crop of three year olds. We can't be the only trainer with a low crop of three year olds because we seem to be selling them all abroad again, uh, these 90 to 100 rated fillies. And one of your favourite ever horses was trained by Ed, wasn't it? Yeah, Ed, I was always a huge fan of your horse, Swindler, who actually was, uh, he, he was beaten favourite in this Woken and we finished fourth in this two years ago. And uh, I, I loved Orsi. He, he seemed to have his own his own way of doing things, shall we say? But um, he was one that went abroad, wasn't he? Yeah, he may have been your favourite. He was one of my least favourite. <laughs> <laughs> he was such a pain. I mean, I, he, honestly, every day he was just a nightmare. And um, poor Monica, who rode him every day, and and 
ran him down to the start in every race and um he was a real challenge and, and we got very well paid from to be honest with you in the end um and he's done quite well he's, he's definitely won in bahrain i think he's done all right out there he won a decent race out there um they train him on the treadmill and stuff which it seems to help him but he yeah he was he was fourth in the stewards cup very talented horse but just had his own idea that was a cha-ching moment for you then. Absolutely, yeah, off you go. You know, reminds you of selling a car, don't you? Where you know it's going to be a little bit temperamentally get top dollar for it. Uh, what, what ever happened to, of course, a horse in the same colours in? He was ridiculously expensive. English King, wasn't he, down under? A name that I've not really heard since. I don't think he was ridiculous. I mean, look, we, we got very well paid for him. Um, but he was a seriously talented horse. I, unfortunately, they just... What that horse needed was was a trip and very fast ground. And it's actually a bit of a myth that Australia is all about fast ground. They get plenty of soft ground over there. And the way they train over there, they quite often like to bring horses back and trip, start them over a mile, trying to sort of sharpen them up or train speed into them or whatever they try and do. And it just doesn't doesn't work for that horse. So I think being a Camelot and being a little bit mentally, you know, soft maybe, he um I don't know, it just it just sent him the wrong way, but he's, he wants really fast. But if he was still in this country, he'd be running in, in after Gold Cup and, and Double Cup, proper fast ground, stays all day. You know, he, he ultimately, I think, you know, he ran well in the derby, but just didn't really have the, the pace for it. Um, and the Linkfield derby trial, they went flat out from the get-go on very, very fast ground. And that was his, the best performance of his life. Um, so, yeah, but we did get well paid. I think he was I think he warranted it. His earning potential, especially in Australia, was vast. Well, that's the interesting point there, wasn't it? Where Ed said, you know, to the likes of you and me, Pat, we look yeah. at, a, you know, a telephone figure like that and we're just like, wow. Yes. And Ed thinks, well, actually, that you know, there's a bit of value in that. It doesn't always work out, doesn't it? It's interesting to hear what Ed said, yeah. you know, if he was still here, absolutely. what he would be running is. It is a frustration at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to ask Ed about Starman. How many offers would you have had for him and how tempted were the owners to sell? Uh, well, David War was never going to sell him, sell him for the end of the race in career because um, you know, they spread him and, and, you know, it's a long story, which you all know, but, you know, first mayor he ever, sorry, first filly he ever bought, Ed Catwell bought, and then produces Sunday Star and then Starman. So, and David is very, you know, he was lovely horse, he was very attached to him. But yeah, he was offered a huge, huge figures, but he never really got that far because it was never quite an offer until his race in career was coming to an end. You tried to tease an even bigger figure out of there, which, which, which probably would have had you off your chair, but uh, all right. Um, just, let's just talk a couple of favourites, if you don't mind. Came from the dark you mentioned. How's he at the moment, Ed? Yeah, it's been a bit of a disaster, to be honest. He, last year, he came so good because he had a gelding up and a wind up, which the wind up made a massive difference. And then his season was cut short by a, a, a different setback. He's been very good practice. He had a hock injury. So we gave him plenty of time for that and had to operate on that. And then we brought him back this year. And in the spring, as it started working, as far as wind doesn't sound good again, ran him a couple of times and it became evident that his, his wind needed looking at again. He's now had another wind operation and we hopefully will have him back to the autumn. But we'll see. Yeah, all right, fingers crossed because he's absolutely one of my favourites and uh, everyone loves a great sprinter, don't they? So I hope he comes back. And what about Primo Baccio, who, of course, ran at the week? Now, Ed, she uh, she is the perennial eye-catcher, I think, in training, isn't she? Yeah, she's quite frustrating to train. She's she's shown, you know, absolute brilliance, you know, at York and then, again, in the Falmouth straight after that race. And we've never really recaptured that form. It was a big run at Ascot. Um and there's been lots of kind of debates about is she a printer, is she a miler, and lots of I mean ahhing about bringing her back in trip. And we, we did bring her back in trip. And to be honest with you, from my point of view, watching the oak tree, my first reaction across the line is miler. You know, she needs to go back up in trip. You know, she was doing a lot of good work later on. And um, yeah, she's very frustrated. But she, she's very talented, and it's gonna it's gonna come right for her, I, I believe. We, we haven't got long left. She's fast ground mile. And then we'll, well, the weather forecast continues to look in your favour, so fingers crossed that you find that opening for her. Shall we look then to horses that have come good for you uh, this year? Then, basically, it's a big weekend for you, Ed. You've got two runs in the Stewards' Cup, but uh, uh, first, you've got uh, Glenn Artney in the uh, uh, the Lily Lanch who steps back up in trip after listed success for you at Pontefract last time out. 
yeah, it's great to get that stakes win under her belt, which she really deserved. She was very unlucky at York, um, and um, she was quite a sort of controversial race where half the field got taken out by the winner. Um, we won't go down that route, but um, <laughs> and um, she's a, a filly. She she'll stay all day. Soft, but she, I don't think she'll be seen at her very best for the get on the soft ground. But you know, she Ponty was pretty quick when she won. We're happy to take our chance on Saturday. Um, and she's a she's a talented filly, and she, she's going the right way. And she's wrong at the weight by six or seven pounds, but you know, it's a lot of prize money on offer. And and if you can get placed. It, it all adds to her value, so we're we're, we're happy to give it a go. Ross Cody's done a great job with her. He's a he's an under the radar jockey, um, but he's very talented. He's a really good guy. He's got inside this fitty's head and, and understands her, and which is often the way with these fitties. You know, you, you just got to work them out mentally as much as anything else. And um, he's done a great job with her. So uh, he he stays on and and um, good on on Gainer Rupert for for letting him keep the ride and and fingers crossed. They can get it done. Yeah, she's going to get backed by a few because she goes over to one next to her name. She's not <coughs> that, you know, fully exposed. She's tried the trip before. She's from that great Rothschild family, isn't she, of Nathaniel. Isn't that interesting to hear about the jockey? Because Ed's associated with doing so well with these fillies, and yet the jockey obviously yeah, has a yeah. lot to do with it. Yeah, of course. And he is, he is, he is an under-the-radar type of jockey, isn't it? And, of course, Ed, Ed's horse is the only one in the race that won last time out. So... Um, it's not insurmountable. As I said, it's only seven pounds to find with the the top rated ones, and you know that's it's that's easy turned over. So I, I could definitely see her running a, a decent race um, at at the price. Not so much pressure on there, maybe then uh, Ed, or, or not so much as you're letting on. But then we go to the three twenty, and you have business with, of course, the Shewers Cup. We mentioned Swindler, who made the frame. Great ambassador comes back. Shall we start with him uh, for you, Ed? Uh, basically, he's a couple of pounds higher, but you're claiming off him, of course. Third in the race last year on softer ground. He then went to air, uh, and everyone thought he was going to win uh, the Air Gold Cup, only for Bielsa to come on his blind side and get him. If ever, if ever a sprinter deserves a big day in the sun, tomorrow is his. He really does. I mean, he last year was brilliant, but so frustrating in many ways. You know... Royal Ascot last year was pretty brutal for us. We had, you know, we had to scratch Starman from the um, the Diamond Jubilee, Primo Baccio from the Coronation, who was a soft ground, heavy ground. And great ambassador, I scratched from the Woking and probably slightly regrettably. And, and, and I, I got fed up of waiting the fast ground and ran him in the Stewart's Cup in bad ground last year and he ran out to blind us. So I probably should have run him in the Woking. Um, but uh, yeah, so he was very unlucky last year. And then, God, you know, the Air Gold Cup, he destroyed the field. He won his race, you know, hands and heels, and managed to get sort of blindsided by Bielsa on the other side of the track. So that was annoying. Um, so he does deserve a big day. Hopefully, hopefully it's, it's tomorrow. Um, hopefully, I haven't made a hack of the draw choice, um, which is never easy. I hate those things. There's enough pressure on trainers. We get we get enough rollicking for getting things wrong without having to choose the draw as well. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, probably got the draw wrong, but we'll see. I mean, the pace looks to be high. Um, and Lawrence and I decided to go low with Popmaster, which I don't regret. And um, great ambassador, 12, we'll just see. But thrilled to have Safi on board, three pounds off. You know, he was 106 in the Air Gold Cup when he ran so well. He's running effectively off 104 tomorrow. Um, so, doable. Yeah, Safi, a good jockey for him. I, mm. I think we could agree with that. Where's Great Ambassador sitting in the market at the moment, Pat? And, and, and isn't that good? We are doing a, se a, a separate preview, guys, of yeah. course, uh, for the Stewards' Cup. You, you've just had all the draw analysis there, pretty much. It, it does look high, the pace, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, both of Ed's are around about 10 to 1 at the moment, and uh, would be no surprise if either of them won, would it? But, of course, you can say that about uh, the first seven or eight in the market. But uh, I suppose, I, Ed, you, in terms of sprint handicaps, you've got, you've got the Portland, the Air Gold Cup later on in the year, so... All is not lost if you don't win tomorrow. Yeah, sadly, the Portland. I actually won the Portland with Captain Colby a few years ago, and it's you know it's such a great print handicap, and it and it doesn't for some reason well, I don't know why it doesn't carry the stature um, that these races do anymore because of the prize. It's not worth anything like the way you know, it's up there. Bob. So um, it's a shame that race lost its um, lost its place a little bit in in the in the season, but. Yeah, there are plenty of options these guys, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to 
Tell us a quick word on Potmaster then. Second to Rohan, of course, uh, at, at Royal Ascot in the Wokenham. Had the rail that <coughs> day. This time you feel that that, uh, that Lowe is fine. There are a couple of horses around you, aren't there? Uh, the likes of Anna for you, who might go on uh, for Mick Appleby. But why the low draw was picked for him then? We kind of feel with him. He ran really badly this year at Newmarket, the start of the season. And, I, and, I, and he ran obviously brilliantly at Ascot in the Wokenham. We don't think he likes being crowded too much. You know, and, and he just gets this sort of backed out a little bit when he gets too tied up on a rail or too many horses around him. Um, and we just felt that there was going to be a bit more speed um, in the lower numbers on the other side of the track there. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any bias with regards to ground. Pace is obviously important. But he slightly did his own thing at that, but it didn't, didn't bother him. So we, you know, and, and the stats with regards to low versus high are pretty even. I think the winner can come anywhere, really. Um, and we just think Potmaster is probably less dependent on having something to aim at than, than um, great ambassador. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, you've got one, of course, in the uh, 430, a horse that's really found his feet for you. It's Fantasy Believer, who, of course, has got Goodwood form and he's on a right roll. Yeah, he ran well for Charlie Hills at Goodwood. Um, and the last two starts have been great. Um, Tom, firstly, Tom at Newbury and then, and then Safi at Ascot. So he's on the back, you know, going for a hat trick, very tough race. He's got a good draw, brilliant jockey, and ground could be quick enough for him, probably. He might just be at his best with a with good or, or just a you know, bit of bit of toughness. Um but he's a he's a really sweet horse, fun horse, um, owned by some great, very enthusiastic owners. And uh yeah, hopefully he'll have a big race. He's got a cracking draw, that's for sure, under Tom Marquois. He's bound to be popular. What is he, around about 12 to 1 at the moment? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and again, Ed's, uh, he's, he's got Tom Marquand, and so that's another plus. And of course, Tom Marquand is on Popmaster, and uh, you know, not, not often you can get a jockey of his uh, value riding in a race like that. He normally, of course, rides for William Haggis, who didn't have a runner, but. Uh, yeah, you know, you wouldn't rule out a big day for Ed tomorrow. Yeah, OK. Well, absolutely. It's been somewhat of a frustrating crossbar week for you so far, Ed, but a great year. Much, much more to come. Just a, just a quick one, Ed, because um, you, know, you might have a word for this. Uh, news was broken during the week that uh, former BHB chairman Peter Saville is now leading a group. Some, something of an underhand move, this, but ARC are involved, the race course is involved, trainers involved, to finally, the news that we wanted, cut back on the fixture list. Now, again, this is all just breaking at the moment. Trainers were seemingly asked. Did you get the call? No, I didn't get the call. Um, I don't feel like I needed or, or, or warranted the call. Um, I, I actually shared a, a table at your class here with Peter Stavell and the first time I've ever met him. Um, Scotty understands the game and, and he, he knows what we need. And, and you know, I'm thrilled to learn that he's He's behind this, and, and um, I am fully supportive of whatever he and they decide to do or, or are trying to do. Because um, you know, he in his time as as, as the, uh, the head man, you know, he came pretty close to making some significant changes, which I think got thrown out by the European Court. But you know, he he was very very close, to a pretty good deal for us, and um, let's hope he can try again. Yeah, absolutely. One thing we all agree on, there's too much racing at the moment. Well, we've been very lucky to have you, Ed, on despite the fact it's a Friday. You've only got one runner uh, this evening. Mole's memory in the novice stakes. What chance is she? Midnight Mole. Mad Mole, uh, there we go. Yeah, old Midnight Mole, even. <laughs> all these mole horses all over the place. You can tell I'm a bit confused. Midnight Mole, let's go with that name. Will it be a winning name? Yeah, well, she, she surprised me on debut, to be honest with you. I mean, she's impeccably bred. She's not shown a huge amount at home. Um, and... You know, she, she, Kieran loved her when he rode her. She's actually stepped up and woken up quite a bit since then. Her work's improved. And it's going to be tough to beat a 95 race of Philly with a penalty, but I think that really, you know, can be a bit inconsistent. And um, I wanted to step her up to a mile. We had her in at seven at Red Car, but I just didn't really want to go into a crappy race over seven bars. So hopefully, hopefully she can make another step forward. Um, obviously, with her bike, she, she can get some, now that she's won, she get some black bike one day so we'll hope you use this for a bit more experience and then aim her at stakes races further down the line but you know, nice pretty amazing amazingly well bred great great family and holly dolls amazingly good form so hopefully 
Yeah, bidding to make it two out of two under Holly uh, this evening at Newmarket at 7.30. Ed, we've definitely kept you longer than we should have done, which is an absolute pleasure to have you on as usual. From myself and Pat, all the best from everyone at What A Shout for the rest of 2022. Fingers crossed tomorrow, one of them gets you over the line in the stewards. Guys, thanks a lot. Right, the moment you've been waiting for, most of you. It is the big race preview starting in the mile six handicap. It's 2.10 at Goodwood, Pat Cooney. Give us the market update as it stands. Difficult to call the favourite at the moment. It's five to one the field. Trawler Man and Soapy Stevens head the market currently. I think there's plenty of life left in this market, really. There's, there's lots of horses of chances. Our race that we sponsored at Newmarket, the Bet365 Trophy, it was a good race to start, really. Five of the horses that ran in that race are, are taking them each other on again. That day, Soapy Stevens narrowly beat Red Flyer, who was a massive price. And Soapy Stevens is going to be popular. It's Mark Johnston and Charlie Johnson at Goodwood, so they're always yeah. going to be very popular in the market. But interestingly, the unlucky loser of the race was Trawlerman of uh, John and Thady Goss and Benoit de la Sayette's riding him on Saturday. And he was going okay, and the door got slammed right in his face, and the jockey eased him when he was beaten. But he did come back in and say, Mm, I'm, I, I'd have gone close there, and he's got a first-time hood. Now, since the final decks have come out, Trawler Man has been the hot horse in the market. I don't think anything will be less than 5-1 to one in the race. It's wow. that, that, that sort of a race. And you can make a plausible case out for many of them. Fally Vorge is a horse that I seem to fancy every time he runs. I backed him first six places in the Northumberland plate. I said to a pal of mine, he, it's inconceivable he'd be out the first six and he finished seven. Uh, always the way. I did as well, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, but he ran okay and he got beat a couple of lengths. Yeah. Um, he's a, he's a traveller as well, isn't he? He's a tra and he, 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 he's, he's in the equation for sure. My eye is drawn to one of George Baker's with Holly Doyle, the, the, the jockey at the moment, Sem Hahn, who, another one, we talked about unlucky losers at Goodwood. There were several unlucky losers at the Royal Ascot meeting and this fellow was one of them. Uh, would have been a lot nearer. And then at the start of the season at Newmarket, when I was there, Sam Hahn did actually beat Soapy Stevens. And Valley Forge. And Valley Forge. So why shouldn't Sam Hahn go well? Why shouldn't Sam Hahn be favourite? I can yeah. imagine Sam Hahn will be popular because the public love Holly Doyle horses. So there'll be lots of Holly multiples flying around. And yeah. this is leg one of them. So I think Sam Hahn will shorten in the market and is one of several with a chance. We've got the uber-valuable Ebor, of course, coming up yes. uh, around about this time next month at York. This is another stepping stone there. I think Semhan will turn up there after winning this race. Uh, the new market form is key for me. It couldn't have worked out much better. Correct. You're right. And I don't think that was the initial plan at Ascot. They'd have liked to have gone for the Copper Horse handicap, I think. He just couldn't get into it, which is over a mile six. This is perfect for him. Holly will hopefully do what she did on Nashua. Bide her time and come wide, no trouble, please. Uh, Robbie, what... Caught your eye on this. Yeah, a uh, really hard race. Uh, of the principles, I like Bag Door. He's two from two over one mile six, and he just does enough. Uh, he's not only gone up five pounds for those two wins, and they were in pretty good races. RPR of 99 last time, he goes off 88. I mean, the differential between the last... like To get an RPR above 11 pounds for the winner, that's not happened since 2013. So if he replicates that run, he should go very close. Uh, the other one is complete outside of the field, Gold Maze. I thought he was massive at about 40 to one. Um, he ran in English and Irish derbies a couple of years ago for Jesse Harrington. Yeah. Lost his way a little bit. Uh, but the pedigree, I like I like the step up to one mile six. I think that's interesting. Golden Horn out of a Galileo mare. And uh, on his stable day for Jamie Osborne, I thought he ran really well behind one. The Montalban at Ascot. Didn't get into it behind Candleford last time, but he's down in the ratings again. You uh, forgive that run, I think, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. A lot of horses didn't get into it. So 40 yeah. to one, I thought he was quite good. And he's drawn in stall one. It's not the end of the world. That's why Robbie's here then, a massive gold maze. Interesting, wasn't it? Classics a couple of years ago, now finds himself in handicap company. Shall we go to Newmarket on the July course we're still on? 2.25, Pat, listed race. Again, another tricky little A occasion. tricky race, yeah. Rose of Kildare is currently round about the 7 or 4 favourite. And why not if official ratings float your boat? Well, she's got £4 and, uh, and more in hand over the rest of the field. Um... Does she float my boat? Not a seven or four, she doesn't. Um, I think she's got a perfectly decent chance. Um, but, you know, she, sort of a mixed looking CV she's got, really. It was a solid enough last run. She's a course winner, go well. But th there's other horses in the race to consider. Of course, the, the Gosdens run a couple, elegant verse and emotion. Both coming off the back of a, mm, not, not nothing really performances. Rafe Beckett runs Star Fortress with Ross Ryan at the back, another horse. Up, tough to get a proper angle on. I, I thought Technique was, was an interesting runner with William Buick aboard. I, I've, I've been in the, on the bandwagon on this horse before and, it, and, it, and she's disappointed a bit, but 
That being said, Rosa Kildare is only rated four pound in front of her, and I could see Technique on her overall level of form appealing to me more at her round about 11 or 2 than certainly the favourite at 7 to 4. Yeah, OK, three-year-olds have tended to dominate this race. I must say that Star Fortress really catches my eye. Mm. Very lightly raced uh, in prominent colours uh, for Rafe Beckett. Ross Ryan, one of my top three jockeys, I'm going to say. Who are the other two? I'm, I'm not going to declare that. Right. I'm just not going Quite to. A secret. Because I don't want the world of pain opened up and the viewers don't okay. want to be going in, oh, no, don't like him, don't like her, and all that sort of thing. Ollie Doyle's in there as well, but I just don't know. Oh, I've got, got one more now. It's isn't it? Ryan, isn't it? I mean, you've teased me into it. I would go Ryan, Holly, Rosser at the moment. I love Rosser. In that order? I just think he's brilliant. Yeah, in that order. Okay. I'm going to go in that order. Sorry, guys. There's no... No, 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 no William Buick then, no? no not, uh, remarkably not, no. But okay. look, it's all choice, isn't it? We've got to have a trifecta. Things change quickly as well. Listen, this was not in the running order, and I can now see us going. Well, there'll be loads of people on Twitter. It's fun to improvise. Of, it is fun to improvise, and you are usually terrible at it, but you've actually come up trumps. You're learning you. finally. Star Fortress, for me, she's bred to be running over this trip. She's got the team, as I say, and three-year-olds. I think she, if there's one horse going forward, it's probably her. What about you? Yeah, I agree. Star Fortress is mine. Um, Rose of Kildare. Um, I just wonder, like, you know, we always talk about the bounce, don't we? But she obviously like, returned from loads of time off in February, yeah. and then she's had a, a lot more time off in July. Uh, to come back in July, but that was only a couple of weeks ago. Could she bounce from the bounce? Maybe? It's one of those cliches as well, isn't it? Interesting, she stays in training. You know, yeah, and Katara yeah. bought into her. I mean, whatever. She, she, I mean, she won the Moose Adora, so she's not going to lose any value as a broodmare yeah. prospect. The market but, suggests that it could be a big half an hour for the Brave Hearts. Yes, yeah, absolutely. in the first two races of recovery. Right, let's go back to Goodwood, shall we? It's the Lily Langtry. We've spoken to Ed Walker, of course, about his horse Glentani in this. Where does she sit in the market again, Pat? Well, she's round about fourth in at the moment, round about 10 to 1, and I don't completely dismiss her. She's the only one in the field who won last time out, and prior to that, of course, she was unlucky at York when she was taken right across the track, Yeah. and I thought she was a little bit unlucky, as indeed the second was, so it was a bit of a sort of a... Uh, you know, an unsatisfactory race, really. But uh, she, on official ratings, the horse to beat really is C. La Rosa of William Haggis. And C. La Rosa, she was second in now Bet365 Lancashire Oaks behind Free Wind. That was the race Jim Crowley it's and Rab Very Hathlin. strong. The, the, the controversial race, of yeah, course, had, but very had, strong form. Yeah, there, had, had the Dodgems there. And she finished second, beaten four lengths. Now, Free Wind was ultra impressive. And I know connections were thinking, well, you know, she's a group one horse. So for, for uh, Cela Rosso, who runs in this group two to have been beaten four lengths, it's all there really for a, a mighty run. The market rival is Emily Dickinson of Aidan O'Brien. Mm. Um, it's a typical Aidan O'Brien, like she had, it was at Concert Hall the other day, that they he keeps just running them and running them and running them. He doesn't have any cults to run. <laughs> no, that's right. And, uh, you know, she was fourth. It was a good run, a good enough run last time out. She would be the form book danger. As interesting, yes, yes, of Rafe Beckett. That hasn't run for mm. 10 months. Interesting starting point for her, this, I think. Yeah, yeah, straight into group twos. Yeah. But I keep coming back to Cela Rosa as being the likely winner. But I could definitely look at Glenn Atani for Ed Walker and say, well, you know, that, that should at least have each way uh, consideration. I've got the feeling when we were chatting to Ed, I don't know about you viewers out there, that he just quietly, he quite enjoyed the no pressure on and we can just see what we've got here and... Like you say, she was a little bit unlucky in that messy race at York uh, first time over the trip. So I agree, though. Cela Rosa, this is our unison bet, by the way. Yeah. But we're not napping it, Cela Rosa, are we? No, we're, we're not saying, napping it. She's, we're not napping she's it. Pretty, she's pretty short, but I think she deserves to be. I think free win is a group one. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yes. I think she's going to run very well in the Yorkshire Oaks next time. Yeah. Um, and this firm, they just don't miss the ball with horses. No, they don't. Too, right? you, see those, you see those silks, and they're, they're always short prices. But... Yeah. This is also uh, a sister to Doville Legend, who won the Bahrain Trophy. Uh, can have absolutely fine over the trip. Uh, just to note, Emily Dickinson, three-year-olds don't receive quite as much weight this year. They've got two pound worse off than last year, so that could make a bit of a difference, I think. Yeah, she's, 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 she traps people in. And really the fact that the Irish Oaks, I thought, was pretty dismal, to be honest. Well, yeah. Okay, quality, okay. Without Emily up to running. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Although well, Magical Lagoon, I think, is also we can all get with going forward. Oh, I like her, but yeah, not, not group one. Yeah, we could set up about their derby as well. But look, look, we must again. He's digressing. Listen, there are other shows. Uh, we you don't do that on this one. All right, okay. Great to have the anti-postman back. Before we look at the Stewards Cup, uh, which is at three twenty. Now, before we go to Pat, I'm going to start with you here, Robbie. Is this oh, a race, no. obviously, with your eyes that race. you've looked at straight after the Wokenham, or nah, not at all? Because um, you don't like sprints, do you? No, I don't like them. No, too, they're too hard, aren't they? So never expect runners. an anti-postman mail shot about the, you know... Certainly not, no. I'd much rather have a, an eight-runner one-mile-four race 
Well, shall we get your token yeah, selection? Yeah, let's, out let's of get our token selection, uh, Summer Gand, purely from a handicapping perspective. I mean, you never really know where the correct place to be drawn is in, in this race. Well, I'm thrilled to see that someone is going for old Summer Gand, yeah, a, a previous winner. Uh, let of the me race. explain. Uh, he won Please. it off £8 higher two years ago. He's been running back into form lately, even though his mark's been falling. Uh, really good sixth at uh, York, was it? And then a really good fifth at Ascot behind Rohan. But I feel like he's only gone down in the weights because he's eight years old. If he was a younger horse, they wouldn't, the handicap wouldn't have treated him so well. And when Summer Game runs off 100, he's always competitive. And he obviously handles, of course, in distance very well. Yeah. He's double figure price. Uh, I think there's quite a bit to like. But you could have a fun bet on him then, couldn't have you? Have a fun one, yeah, but it's, it's not a bullish selection. It never can be in a 28 runner sprint. Yeah, it looks like the pace is high, as we said, if you were watching our um, interview uh, with Ed Walker. And he's got a uh, great ambassador in 12, but he went low for Popmaster. Now, again, if you haven't watched the interview, go back and do that, because honestly, it was very insightful. But Popmaster is not a horse that likes being crowded, which is interesting. It suggests that they might make an arrow towards the at a stand side pack if you had to try and make it up. But working out the draw on paper in these sprint handicaps is a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, and we've been lucky in recent years. We've said, oh, well, we'll look at the uh, the Consolation Stewards <sighs> Cup because First at least mentioned. there'll be 20 runners in that and we'll be able to get a good guide in the race an hour or so earlier. Well, we haven't got that this time because right? there's only 12 runners in that yeah. race. So we're, we're still none the wiser. So m maybe you're better at picking one high and one low. I mean, you know, the films will be six places for sure. Uh, what will be favourite? Uh, it's desperately difficult to call what will be favourite. Mr Wagyu is currently favourite. Now this horse has got this amazing stat, hasn't he? He only ever wins in June <laughs> and July. So it's lucky for him it's the 30th of July yeah. on Saturday. If it was the 1st of August, no one would fancy him. So it's, it's amazing. Um, popular horse. Um, one horse that we have laid anti-post who, at, at first glance, it's, it's hard to, to, to find really, and he's drawn 25. Is number uh, is uh, the Roger Teal horse when the deal is done. One for the Kenny Rogers uh, fans there. Who has one at the course? Who, uh, yeah, he's got course win over five, yeah. and he was an unlucky loser at Royal Ascot last time. I think he finished seventh. But if you watch that race, you know he was stopped, stopped, and stopped. So you can't get stopped three times in a sprint and win that. He has been the popular anti-post order in the race. Um, if I was to pick one and one only. I quite like Inver Park of uh, George Bowie, who this horse it won the Buckingham Palace at Royal Ascot. And he only went up four pounds. Well, he only won by a length, but he, he did beat 28 other horses at Royal Ascot. Mm. And in my mind, if I haven't beaten 28 horses at Royal Ascot, I should be going up more than four pounds. But that's where he is. So he hasn't run since then. George Bowie, Ben Curtis, drawn 15. Don't know if that's good, bad or ugly, but at least Jockey can look up after a furlong and go, oh, I'm going to go that way or I'm going to go that way. Yeah. Um, Who so wins though, Pat? I, I'm going to go for Inver Park. I get Summer Gand. His form figures are like a mobile phone, though, aren't they? 0800 65. <laughs> good line, man. You know what he rings. <laughs> 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 now, now. <laughs> they were for used cars. <laughs> um, but yes. I'm having a lot of taxis, yeah. <laughs> he is coming back to form. And if David O'Mara won the Stewards' Cup, you'd go, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. And he's, oh, yeah. And uh, if, if I mention some again, I've got to mention Gulliver because the, they are. You know, the similar types. Now, he's they? on the far side, yeah. which is where my selection is, first folio, for James Ferguson and that great syndicate. Again, I felt sorry for him in the Wokenham. Yeah, he was unlucky he as was, well. He was just, he ran really well away from the main action. They're chucking cheap pieces on. There is a big one in this, and it's a project I'm going with. Would I like it to be slightly higher? Having looked at where the pace is, probably. And is he going to get drawn out of it again? <laughs> it might be another Bielsa in the making, this. A dear old Bielsa. But I've got to stick with him. And it was interesting to hear that, Re uh, that Ed chose the far side. I don't think just because Potmaster wants, you know, a bit of space around him. So, yeah. uh, look, I'm, I'm sticking with First Folio. What price is he in the market? First Folio has been popular. It's around about 12 to 1 at the moment. And mm. again, if you watch a horse's last run, you'd be saying, wow. Let me know when that runs next. Well, it's in the Stewards' Cup, and it's, uh, so many of these, that when they do get beat, they're unlucky, aren't they? And uh, they might just be unlucky again. So it's, it's a tricky draw. Maybe, as I say, play one high and one low each way. Did we give you much help there on the stewards? <laughs> That's the question. Uh, but uh, it is one of them. Good luck, Rev. You're playing one of the, you know, the most fun races to have a bet in, of course, of the entire 
flat season. We've got one more to bring you, uh, of course, uh, on television at Goodwood. It's a seven furlong race. I really like one in this, Pat, but I'll tell you after you give me a market update, please. Well, at, at the moment, uh, Spirit of Nguru, William Haggis, Tom Marquand is the market leader, round about four. And positive impact for the Chriswood team, that's round about joint favourite as well. So it's an interesting market. It's not that big a field. Uh, it's, I think it's just the 10, so you shouldn't really get too hung up on the draw. It's an interesting race. There's lots of progressive horses in the race. I thought an interesting runner was Zero Carbon of Richard Hughes, who had a winner at Goodwood earlier on in the mm. week. Um, and I just thought, when, when this one won at Haydock, we actually sponsored at the meeting, and it was a right hot race. It was the last race on the card. There was money around for a Haggis horse, money around for a Roger Varian horse. It wasn't a particularly big field, but there were good marks knocking around for at least three others in the race. And he jumped off in front, and he made all the running. And he looked beat from start to finish in the race, but showed a lot of resilience yeah. to win. And draw nine, I suppose they're going to pop him out and, and make the run in again. Front runners round Goodwood, nipping round the bends. I could see that one. Catch me if you can. So that would be my selection. But for the field sums it up. Yeah, Richard Hughes, who has tasted success at the meeting already. And of course, Holly Doyle on then. And yep. Spirit of Naguru was second that last time. A lot of people were expecting a natural progression, yep. that one to go on. But I don't know. I'm not so sure. Aren't I'm yeah. Yeah, I think, Before I tease you I in this, who are we going Spirit for? of Naguru will reverse the form, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, was on, that was on yeah, that was on soft grounds. Uh, pedigree is all about fast grounds, so I think that was quite a quite an encouraging run and first start in six months, whereas mm. Zero Carbon was pretty fit. So yeah, uh, yeah I think Spirit and Guru is the one. This is quite a tasty race. I wonder if we're in danger of doing a pile driver here, an overlooking Galliac in the race, uh, who runs, of course, for um, pile drivers joint trainers. Um, Willie Muir and Chris Grassick. And this came up against a right horse last time at Sandown, Golden Voice, who I think if if goes for the Cambridgeshire, mm. he's, he's due to turn up at York, Golden Voice for the Haggis team. Uh, I think he's probably, I don't, I'm convinced he win uh, the Cambridgeshire. I think he's, he's definitely a group two horse at the moment in handicaps. Uh, and this chap, Galliac, who has won over course and distance earlier in the year here at Goodwood, paid for putting it up to him. That cost him second. It's a strong race, that. Uh, the form's working out. He's drawn in two. David Probert on. He's going to be up there throughout. And again, I just I think he's the one that's certain to hit the line. But this is a tasty race, isn't it, this mm, one? Yeah. You can see what I put it on television. Yes. All right, then. There are your Saturday previews. Hope you enjoyed that. <coughs> Let us know below your naps. OK. Drum roll. It's nap time. And let's just get this out of the way. Look, we have a little production email thread where you send in your selections pre-show. OK. Pat. You were going to nap in the last race at Goodwood on Saturday. I did initially nap in the last race mm -hmm. on Saturday. And then this buffoon here <laughs> didn't read the email and then just goes and naps in it's, it. It's of no relevance what you boys are napping to me. Because what wins the last race at Goodwood Adjiro, on Saturday? Adjiro, Kim Bailey. You think he's finally going to get his day I in the sun? I think he deserves it, yeah. Um, I mean, he's had excuses for all four of his seconds on the flat. The first one, he missed the break by 10 lengths. He should have beaten Nathaniel Green, who's quite good. We saw a win yes, on live, yes. didn't we, a few weeks ago. Uh, the second one, he's bumped into Francesco Clemente, who has got Looks an like arc entry. Very good and look, yeah, yes. put up RPR of 114 last time. The, the third one, uh, good race at Chepstow. See the Casper beat him. And then the fourth one recently, Royal Ascot second in the Duke of Edinburgh behind Candleford, just bumped into one there. He's only up two pounds. I thought he was going to win from a long way out. He was unlucky at Ascot. Yeah, he, really? just didn't, he didn't see out the, the climb quite as well. Yeah. But, um, I mean, yeah, he's down three phones in trip, but, I mean, he's been... Kim, Kim Bailey's quickest horse, he said, isn't he? And uh, well, I just think he's, he's good enough to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> not um, a surprise. I think he just, he's good enough to win a, a yeah. decent handicap off 91. And he's, but uh, we decent, would have napped a danger decent in Decent price. Yeah, we landed on the same one, me and Dave. We, went, we, we thought Boltol might be the Mine interest more. of of course, yeah. Uh, gets course, on two Michael two Bond. outweighs one. So. Forgive his run at Royal Ascot, but look, I, I think yes. Ajero, We all would love to see him win, and he's yeah. he's got a strong chance. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. But uh, we, uh, being the gentlemen we are, yes. we stepped out of of the last race and we let Robbie have the limelight. Well, didn't we? So kind. we were quite humble, I felt. We are we're absolutely <laughs> racing pros, unlike the newbie. Here. <laughs> Where did you go, Pat? I'm going to the uh, the Consolation Stewards Cup, the 140 at Goodwood. A week ago, I napped uh, Lethal Levi. Uh, on the back of winning uh, one of the races we sponsored at Newmarket. And when he won at the July meeting, he, he clocked a really rapid time. Mm. And it was no surprise he went back to Newmarket and won again next time out, and again in good style. He's a horse going places, he loves the fast ground. 
in my own mind, I'm thinking, oh, hang on, new market, new market. Does that mean he'll handle Goodwood? Carl Burke just thinks he's a quick horse. So, uh, uh, and he did mention Goodwood back at the July meeting. So he had the added bonus of pinching another race at Newmarket. This is always going places. You're going in again. Going in again. Was it last week he was winning? Last week, yeah, yeah. I'm on the train. I'll tell you what. If this horse ever goes to the sales, you're going to have to go to the wife and the bank manager, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be wearing the Cooney colours. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they are, we should make up our own colours for you, couldn't we? But that was very gentlemanly of you to step aside from the last race of Goodwood. I have been forced to nap in the 252 at Doncaster. Uh, but this has got a massive chance for Donahoe and Haggis, a really good team in uh, uh, this season so far. Latanza, <laughs> the horse is called. We haven't seen him since he came up, a course called New London, last time out, uh, you know, on, on his final start. He's obviously had a hold up, but he's good enough to take this out uh, before going on to better things. There's a horse from Godolphin that will hopefully keep the market up. There you go, then. We got there in the end. You travel for the weekend. Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for then on this weekend's What A Shout. It has been an absolute blast to have you back in. Yeah, first show in a few weeks, mate. It's been good to be back With in. your fading Mykonos tan. It is fading. You should have brown I was early in the week. Or... You're going to have to go out and get some more because yeah, I know well, how precious the, you are about Off this appearance. weekend, mate, 26 degree heat, so uh, I'll be coming back glowing on Monday morning. Enjoy it. Hope you get a few winners. And yourself. Always some interesting insight from the anti-postman. Pat, great to have you back. Will we see you next weekend? Is this a thing? Uh, I'm, I think I'm in the office all next week, um, but certainly I'm looking forward to the following week, uh, the York preview. Uh, I'll be in the studio for that. Yeah, sure. great stuff. All right. Great to have you watching. Great to have Ed Walker joining with us. Of course, it's Shergar Cup next weekend. Lots going on for that. And we've got a special guest for you not to be revealed just yet on next weekend's what a shout do join us for that do of course download the free must have racing post app you can do that on the app or the google play store now i say that every week but some people don't have it believe it or not do gamble responsibly that's what it's all about enjoy the stewards cup let's hope the pin lands successfully for you for myself dave orton loads of sports out there enjoy it